Natural selection was a guiding idea for Hitler and the Nazis. Uh, in Mein Kampf, he talks a good deal about the struggle for existence and how uh, humans are struggling, uh, especially races is mainly where he's uh, focusing there, but in other places too he talks about even within German society there's a struggle for existence going on which brings about natural selection. Uh, and they used the word selection quite freely and in fact if you read uh, just about any books about the Holocaust you'll come across the word selection because in the camps that's exactly what they did and they used the term and the term was related directly to Darwinian terminology uh, that when you went to the camps you went through a selection process they were selecting this person to survive and this person to go to the gas chambers Hitler's Mein Kampf refers to evolution quite a bit but the English translator of the book uses the word development instead of evolution Neither Charles Darwin nor his immediate followers were anti-Semitic per se, but their ideas just made the whole thing possible. He saw races locked in competition, and this, in The Descent of Man he explains this, and that because of that, different races will be exterminated. Now, he didn't necessarily believe the Jewish race was one of those inferior races that would be exterminated, but Hitler, of course, did, and he began applying that to Jews. Anti-Semitism had existed for centuries before Hitler came along, but uh, no one tried to exterminate the Jews. For Hitler, extermination was necessary because it's the only way to rid the Jewish blood from the gene pool. Adolf Hitler fancied himself an intellectual. He was always referring to Darwin and to the science of Darwinism as, an, as a reason and as a support for his racist theories. And in that you bring in science, and the Nazis loved science, uh, then this sort of gave it uh, uh, the blessing of, of modern liberal thinking, of scientific thinking. And so Darwinism and the idea that uh, you had superior races, that you had the fittest surviving, uh, certainly underlay uh, the Nazis in their thinking. Before the systematic destruction of Jews and Gypsies and Slavs and other supposedly inferior races, the Nazis killed off tens of thousands of the chronically ill. The Nazis began a euthanasia, so-called euthanasia program in 1939 when World War II began. And they carried these out by setting up six killing centers. It was to get rid of people who had congenital uh, illnesses of various sort. Most of these were institutionalized people who were shipped from various institutions of Germany then to these six uh, killing centers. The total numbers the Nazis killed are difficult to pin down for a number of reasons. It depends on who you're counting. Uh, the uh, numbers of Jews killed were about six million, gypsies six to eight hundred thousand, uh, the euthanasia program about two hundred thousand, but then there were also several million Soviet POWs. I mean, we're talking about in the neighborhood of ten to fifteen million though, likely. Once the killing began, it never stopped. A private meeting was held at the Vansi Conference Center where they decided on the final solution, as in the final solution to the Jewish problem the decision to exterminate the Jewish people. They did refer to Darwin at the Vonze conference. Uh, Reinhard Heydrich commented at the end, uh, Darwin would be astounded at the progress we're going to make in one year as we move the, room, the human race forward. The reason that the Nazis killed the Jews was because they believed that they had uh, bad heredity, uh, didn't want it to infiltrate the German gene pool, and they believed that they were a threat uh, to uh, the Aryan race and to Western culture in general. The Nazis believed that uh, many uh, races were inferior. Uh, in fact, they didn't think the Jews were the most inferior, but they were the most threatening to them, uh, precisely because they were cunning and sly. That's basically how they portrayed them. In other words, the Jewish victims of the Holocaust were slated for destruction simply for who they were. It was pure racism. The Nazis systematically tried to remove all Jews. Hitler declared the Jews formed a subhuman counter race predestined by their biological heritage to evil, just as the Nordic race was destined for nobility. The Nazis thought they were doing humanity a favor. Again, what the Nazis did was to take the eugenics program inspired by Darwinism to the next step. Eugenics is applied Darwinism, and it sticks out like a sore thumb that all of these German eugenicists um, preceding 
the Nazi regime um, were enthusiastic Darwinists. Margaret Sanger, of course, in this country of Planned Parenthood, enthusiastic Darwinist. Uh, Hitler. <laughs> that is the most amazing at all that I could get through um, 12 years of government schools here in the United States, Cornell and Michigan Law School, and with all of the chit-chat about what led to the Nazi regime, um, I never knew about the link between Darwin and Hitler until reading Richard Weikart's book. And once you see it, it's one of those things you see that um, the truth has an inherent appeal. The moment you hear it, suddenly it all makes sense. I mean, how is it that, Dar or, uh, that Hitler could simultaneously seem to be anti-abortion um, but be s slaughtering six million Jews. Well, that's because he wasn't against abortion for Jews. Um, he was applying Darwinism. He thought the Aryans were the fittest, and he was just hurrying natural selection along. I mean, Mein Kampf means mind struggle, which he described in explicitly Darwinian terms, um, the struggle among races. World War II in particular, I think, uh was based even more strongly on social Darwinist ideology because Hitler, I mean, that was a central aspect of his worldview, uh, and it drove pretty much everything that uh, he did. It was not just a peripheral part of his ideology. Uh, if we think of anti-Semitism as being sort of the, the core idea of Nazis, which many people do think, I think that's erroneous. It is a central part. I'm not denying that. But even more fundamental, I think, in his worldview was the social Darwinist ideas. The great lesson of the Holocaust is what happens when man tries to decide who should live and who should die. When man tries to, quote, clean up the gene pool from those viewed as undesirable. To put it simply, no Darwin, no Hitler. Certainly Darwin could never have foreseen the rise of someone like Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, nor presumably desired it. But the fact is, Hitler and the Nazis thought they were doing humanity a favor by weeding out supposedly inferiors and breeding only the supposedly superior race. So, who are you, asked Hitler, to question the marvels of evolution? Hitler tried to speed up evolution, to help it along, and millions suffered and died in unspeakable ways because of it. Columbine shooter Eric Harris wrote on his website, You know what I love? Natural selection. It's the best thing that ever happened to the Earth, getting rid of all the stupid and weak organisms.